So welcome to the Strumzy community call of September 7th. Recording is now running. And the first thing on the agenda are PRs and issues. I don't know if anyone has any specific PRs or issues they want to discuss, but there seems to be quite a lot of PRs in progress and not always showing any signs of liveness or readiness. So please, if you have some open PRs, go through them. And if they are waiting for someone's review or input, please ping them on the PR. Otherwise, consider if they should be closed or maybe add some update about what's going on with them. Does anyone have any specific PRs to discuss? If not, then the next section is proposals. I don't think there have been much change in the proposals. I think the cruise control user proposal is moving forward, but I think Tom Bentley had some comments there and didn't approve it yet. So I guess we should wait at least for his feedback and if he's fine with it, then we should maybe start uh, closing it. So if anyone still wants to review that, then please have a look at that one as well as all the other proposals. Anyone has anything else to proposals? If not, then I guess the issue triage is the next thing. And Kyle joined just in time so that we can decide what to do with this thing. Can you can you hear me? Yes. yes. So uh, this issue I've been following up with um, Aaron on Slack. Um, so I think it, from the evidence that he's he's posted more logs on Slack, they aren't attached here, but I'll have them attach them here. But it looks like it to be an issue with the storage, at least from what I've gathered. Um, he's doing a couple more tests for me, and he's going to get back to me on the Slack channel, but I'll have him update this as well. Um, but I don't think, from what I've seen, it doesn't look like it's, I mean, it's definitely not a Strimzy thing. Strimzy's reporting it accurately and from what I understand Kafka and cruise control are reporting reporting a failed disk accurately um, so he's just gonna um, double check to make sure everything's fine with his disks and um, give us evidence whether they're working or not and we're gonna take it from there and let me I can link the I can link the slack discussion to this comment right yeah if you can do that that would be great. Yeah, let me see if I can find them. Uh, Sorry, Kyle. <clears throat> I didn't follow the the conversation on uh, Slack. Uh, if it was a disk failure or uh, yeah or something related to that, uh, I was taking a look at the code increase control. Uh, just try to understand what kind of it's doing. <clears throat> so I found a place where. Uh, this, uh, as you can see, my last comment on the issue, it can happen that this, uh, yeah, this field is, is null because, uh, yeah, as it says, it, so no replica is found for this partition on the given broker, but it seems that in the code of cruise control, there is no good handling of this case. So how it's related to a disk issue instead of, yeah, being a cruise control issue maybe. So the in the cruise in the logs that he sent me, 
it basically says cruise control can't find the oh well, Kafka can't find the log dir. It can't find the disk, and neither can cruise control. They're both, from what I understand, they're both using the same call to look for the if the disk is there or not. And cruise control reports null if it can't find it. Um, so does Kafka. Um, if the disk was down, that's what it would should, should do anyway. And it even I think it reports to Strimzy. Um, well, there's another bug in Strimzy at play, but that got fixed recently. Um, and the three seven for the it'll be open in the three seven release. But anyway, um, in Kafka and Cruise Control, if the disk failure is if the disk did fail, Cruise Control and Kafka are reporting it correctly from what I've observed in the logs. Um, so from what yeah, if you said like you pointed out, um, if Cruise Control can't find the the disk, it reports null, right? Yes, that could be a, a, a case, right? Uh, but is that possible that uh, so there is no replica for that partition on the given broker? So just reading the comment that I see there in the code of cruise control, it's possible that a broker is not hosting a specific replica of a partition or it's searching for a specific replica or searching for a replica in general. Uh, I, I don't quite understand the, the the question. Could you say it one more time? So yeah, yeah. So it's so when you have a um, when you have a partition with a replication factor, right? You can have uh, a broker not hosting any replica of uh, a specific partition, right? Is that possible? So this uh, issue can happen even in this scenario or not? That was my kind of question. Um, I still don't quite fully understand, um, but so disk failure seems that um, Chris Control Code is looking for a specific replica of a specific partition, but the log is not there, so it's not yeah. able to to access there. But it's looking right. for a specific replica of a specific partition right so right. and that should explain uh, that the, the disk failure drives to this problem oh, and that's fine now my, my my question is i don't know deeply the the cruise control code but do you think uh that the the, the so the, the cruise control is looking for a specific replica of a specific partition or is looking for uh, the broker yes. hosting some replicas of that partition. I think it's the former. I think ah, it's okay. the former. That's yeah. And so when I I don't remember the exact um, error in the log. Let me, I'm going to look at this discussion quick to see if I uh, copy and paste the snippet of the what I found. Um, but yeah, when you it'll make. I remember when I did look at this, you know, last week or two weeks ago. Um, let me see. Cruise control, yeah, made the call for that particular partition, you know, for that broker, and it says, "Oh, it's it's can't. There's nothing there." And then that's and then that error was reported back. And um, what was what's kind of confusing about the issue is I, uh, when Aaron was raising it, he went into the pod and he said that he could look at the. He claimed he could that the. Um, disks were there and working properly. Um, but from the logs, I mean, Kafka couldn't access it. Kafka couldn't find it and Cruise Control couldn't find it. And they use the same, they try to access it the same way. Um, they make the same API call. So um, there was a kind of a concern there that um, maybe there was some, maybe corruption on the, maybe underlying Zookeeper, maybe Cruise Control put in some state when it was rebalancing that made it so that those API calls wouldn't work. Um, that's kind of one worry, but like like I said, from the logs, it looked like maybe his disks were actually just not working, and maybe he wasn't checking them properly. So um, that's why I figured I want him to completely confirm that the disks are working properly, um, because if they aren't, this is going to be this could be quite a nasty bug. Uh, does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Thanks. 
but I can, and you can assign this to me uh, if you want, Jakob. I'll, I can chase, I can follow this up because I've been uh, talking with Aaron for uh, a bit now. So, well, I guess we should either keep it open in triage or we should close it as not a streams issue. Uh, the assignment I mean, I'm, itself. I'm like pretty, I'm pretty I, damn I sure think, it's definitely, it's not I a don't streams think anyone issue. Will anyone nobody will steal it from you so the assigning itself i don't think that i'm not worried about anyone stealing it but i'm pretty sure it's not i'm like dead sure it's not a streams issue so but um, we can leave it open to be flexible okay. if you want i i don't care either which way um and i can once i get the follow up from aaron and i've confirmed one way or the other i can close it myself <laughs> Okay, so next one, so this is the bug which we found with Federico in Kafka Connect, where the way the dynamic update of the lock levels is not implemented properly when you have multi-node Kafka Connect cluster because it basically updates the local levels just on the first node it connects to and not on the others. I guess like the, there seems to be Keep now which tries to make it so that you can update the whole cluster with one call in Kafka. And I guess the thing to decide here is whether we want to try to solve this. I see there is a lot of, of attention on, on this keep and there are lots of comments. I guess it will maybe it will be merged and and it will be approved soon. I mean, um, so we, I think we can wait a little bit because it will be an easy fix. Just adding this new uh, query parameter, request parameter, and we will be done. Uh, we can uh, change the log level cluster wide with just one request. So, how does it sound to everyone else to wait for the keep to be implemented? I mean, no, no one complained so far. So. Yeah, I think there are two reasons why nobody complained. I guess a lot of people run just single node, but also unless you are really looking for something specific right now, then I think over time it kind of updates the whole cluster. So like if you change the lock level, then the next day it might be configured everywhere just by a pure act of randomness. I think also as well, you might, just use this to debug something, at which point you might only care about the loss on one worker. So I agree that I think waiting for the kips is fine. Yeah, the problem is that if you want to debug something, then the current behavior gives you no control over <laughs> which node has the new log level. So uh, okay. uh, yeah, that's not ideal. So, so it might help you that it changes the log level only on the node you want, but it also might mean that it never changes it there for another few hours. Unless you can scale down to one node, so you will be sure that it will work. <laughs> so is everyone fine with waiting for the keep? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I mean, you can always change it by rolling, can't you? So, so I don't think it's that easy to roll the connect pods, to be honest. You can roll them by hand, though, at the very least, can you? Yeah, it's not exactly fun to delete them pot by pot. You can manually use the REST API, right? And point directly to to the pods and then change. But it's not handy, but it works.
So like this, everyone fine with it? Yep. So I guess we remove the triage and we mark it as blocked as it has to wait for the keep. And that's it for the triage. So there are some other points here as well. So Tina and Kate, over to you. Or Tina is not here, so I guess over to you, Kate. Um, yeah, so this was, I guess, a check to make sure that we're not missing an existing proposal. So Tina and I have been working on some changes um, to prove out proposal 82 to basically check that it works. And as part of that, we realized that some of the code we're actually writing, we think fits. It also addresses problems that are currently preventing the code changes for 046 proposals, so the craft liveness readiness. And what we realized is basically, I don't think there's anywhere a proposal that describes what we think the Kafka roller should do in craft mode. So the liveness readiness proposal describes liveness readiness and sort of hints towards some things that the roller might need to do and the workaround proposal um, in order to implement that proposal we have to change stuff in the Kafka roller which touches a lot of the same places but I think it would be useful to get written down an agreement on things like we're going to roll the nodes in this order we're going to roll the active controller last we're going to not roll brokers maybe if the controllers don't roll first. Um, and then that way we think actually a fair bit of the code that we've been writing for the um, proposal 82 can probably be raised as a separate PR directly into Shrimsy and is kind of separate to the workaround for getting hold of the controller conflict. So I guess the ask is, is anyone aware of any existing place where we wrote down what the Kafka roller should do and if not we'll then keep an eye out for a proposal and we'll raise one um, in the next week um, as soon as we can to get it written down and then see if we can get a PR opened with some of the code that we've been writing. So should your proposal replace the the 82 proposal? No so the 82 proposal the main point of it is at the moment, we don't have a mechanism to get hold of the controller config. So we're putting in a workaround in order to determine whether the controller config has changed and automatically then roll the controllers. Why don't you use what we have already and use today, which is generating annotation with the hash based on the configuration? Um, we, we use it anyway for five different things and it will be in use anyway even for the controllers by how it's designed today the what for 82 or yes because the way we were doing it was modeling it after how we currently do the diff for brokers so basically it doesn't seem to make sense to me no but I think what, why don't you, how, hmm? if you cannot do the dynamic update, you don't care about the exact values. You just care about whether something changed or didn't change. It's just a boolean flag or. Yeah. So the, the, the thing that we want to check is which configuration has changed because if a configuration has changed, that's not a controller configuration. There's no point rolling the controllers. But you don't care about which configuration change. You just care that one of the hundred fields affecting the controller has changed. But there is a bunch of configuration, isn't there, that can be changed on a controller, but actually the controller doesn't take. Yeah, into but you you don't care like this exact value changed from this 
to this. All you care about is that one of the values which affect the controllers changed. Right? Yes. So. Oh, already, I see what you mean. We don't actually need to know the. the but don't already to already today, to we have a mechanism that. there. Yeah. Which sets a. Because Kafka can. The Kafka configuration can have a lot of configurations which are unknown to Kafka. Yeah. Like if you use. Open Policy Agent Authorizer or the Keycloak Authorizer, they have a bunch of its own options which Kafka doesn't understand. So, for example, already today we have their mechanism which filters out all these unknown configs, creates a hash from them, sets the hash as the pod annotation, and then when these values change, the pods are rolled based on these annotations. So, why don't you use the same to? filter out the controller relevant options, hash them, attach the hash to the pod, and then roll the pod based on whether the hash changed or didn't change. Yeah, we can certainly look into that. Paolo doesn't like it. No, it's not that. It's that, uh, yeah, it would have been great to have this kind of comment uh, on the proposal before, uh, yeah, Tina and... Uh, and I remember quite exactly that I gave you this comment. Do you remember that? I'm not sure if it was on the proposal, but I know that I specifically said that it doesn't make sense to me to do it in the agent because you can do it in the operator. To be honest, I don't remember that. So it was not on the proposal, it's not on paper, so it's in the air. Uh... Anyway, Kate, if you want, I can show you the code base where this is done. Yeah. So we can sync tomorrow if you or on Monday. I think you are off tomorrow. Yeah, I'm off tomorrow. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Um, but I guess separately from that piece, um, we don't have written down anywhere. If you want to do a rolling update of all of the um, controllers and brokers, what should the Kafka roller do, which order should they be in, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think that's currently captured in 82, and I don't think it belongs in proposal 82. So that's why we are proposing a new proposal to discuss specifically those things. Yeah, I, I think the proposal which you suggest here is definitely something what's needed. Yeah. So I guess look out for a proposal and we'll raise it and a bunch of the code that we've been working on um, applies to that regardless of how we check the configuration anyway. So yeah. we can use that. And Tina, apologies for saying that you are not on the call and in fact you are here. Uh, sorry. No I didn't problem. It on, the, on the list. If nobody has questions on that, then I'll go for the second one that I added, which was Kafka Access Operator. So um, heads up, we're looking at what changes are needed to get into a place where we want to do a first release. Um, is everyone happy? Um, one of the specific questions that came out is in our original proposal, we discussed having, um, so create taking the certificates that are in some of the Strimzy secrets and putting them in the Kafka Access Operator secret so that applications can use them and we specifically talked about both the PEM and the P12 files. But now that Java can handle PEM files better than I think when the original proposal was written way back when, the question is, should we bother with the operator trying to copy across the P12 files or should it just copy across the PEM files and leave it at that? So if anyone has a strong opinion, feel free to weigh in now, or there's an issue which I linked there, so feel free to just comment on the issue as well. I think, I think there are a lot of users right now that are using PK, PKCS12, mm -hmm. right? With all sorts of automations, so maybe it would be better if we still continue to provide for some time. There's no for some time, I think, like, when you edit, there will be people using it and there will be forever yeah. argument that that there are people using it and you have to use it. So like, like when I talked about it with Kate, I wasn't really sure what's the best because 
I totally agree. There's actually super lot of people who think that PKCS12 files cannot be used, that they think they need to have the JKS file. So yeah. yeah, if it's not there, there will be some confused people, but if we edit there, we will never ever get rid of it anymore. So I guess there is a chance to say that we don't edit and when someone comes asking we just tell them hey you can use these pem certificates so we'll use the pem certificates but i i i don't know that's like i think the the two opinions which go against each other with which you can see it, that a lot of people use it even through they can use pem files but that if we add PKCS12 there, we will never ever get rid of it again. I'm tempted to go for less and then see if people ask for more, because I know that at the moment, at least, there haven't been a lot of, there have been, an, of the people that have shown interest in access operator, they've said, oh yeah, it would be kind of useful to have certificates, but we haven't had that many people yet saying, actually, that's an essential part. Um, so I think it would be good to kind of see if we can get some people using it. And then if that becomes a real blocker, then we can add it. Yeah, I agree. Given that it's, it's a new project, so we can do that. I agree. Okay. So... No PKCS 12, 12 files so far. Is that fine for everyone? Yeah. Okay. That's the end of the agenda. Anyone has anything else? Paolo, does the MQTT session next week, is that still planned? Yes, it's still planned. Uh, I am in touch with the, the, the mentee. Uh, well, he started to, to, to study again. So he said to me that he will uh, spend some time this weekend to prepare materials for, yeah, for presentation. So that's 14th September. What is it? Yeah, it's 14th. Yeah, just... That's not 17. Yeah, you wrote 17. Oh, 14. Uh, it's 3 p.m. our time, right? Yes, right. And because I don't have UTC calculator at hand, let's stick with the Central European time and have everyone figure out the right time. And it's also in the Strumzy calendar. And if someone doesn't have that yet, there's a link in the readme in the Strumzy operators repo, and you can import it into your Google calendar. Okay, anyone has anything else? Any other business? If not, then thanks for joining and see you again in two weeks or next week on the MQTT bridge session. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Bye.